Hello, everybody, and welcome to the F Everything Podcast. This is the inaugural episode of uh, F Everything. I am Jim Andrinos, uh, a comedian, writer, author, general douchebag, and I'm joined by Michael Langan, also a uh, comedian, writer. Asshole. Asshole. Yeah. Man bun. Man, he is man bun, and um, because we want to keep it PC, we won't tell you that F Everything just stands for fuck everything. Just... Fuck yeah. everything and everyone and uh, everything anyone believes in. Um, <laughs> if you just want to listen to two miserable human beings just shit all over everything that you find sacred, you've tuned into the right place. This would be the place to go for that exact exact thing. Do you think we're miserable? I don't think we're miserable, but I, I think there's, there's a part of us that welcomes misery. I think we're just smart. We're not uh, stupid enough to think that uh, everything isn't miserable around us. It's not us that's miserable. <laughs> it's it's the everything else. The world else. that yeah. should be miserable. Yeah, everyone else is miserable. Okay. So this, yeah, the first episode. I think we're just gonna go around talk about like some things that are going on in the world that we hate. Yeah, or, or even not. Sometimes not even hate. Just just that it is annoying the shit out of us at this moment. Just at this moment. I think that uh, works out pretty good. Yeah. I think that there's an awful lot of hate to go around. And uh, if you were looking for, like, love and sunshine and puppies and rainbows, <laughs> yeah, this, this isn't where to go. This is not the place for that. Um, cumulatively, I think Mike and I have slept two hours in the past week. Yeah. Is it, did, did, you, did you get an hour? I got an hour. I got an hour, yeah. All right. Yeah. So two hours in the past week. So we're cranky. That's the best way to put this. We are definitely cranky. What time did you go to sleep last night? I went to sleep at 3.40, 3.45. And then what did you do from that time? Uh, I, well, slept from, uh, I slept from 2.45 to 3.45, woke up, and since 3.45, I drove my wife to the airport so she could go visit the family. I drove uh, here to the studio where I immediately opened up the computer, and had to answer the 45 emails about nothing <laughs> that were waiting there. What was the worst one you got this week? <clears throat> the worst, was the worst e hate mail you got? Oh, uh, I, I get an awful lot of hate mail. Because um, I also handle the hate mail for the studio as a whole. So it's my individual hate mail. Plus, whenever they hate something that someone posts, I get it before talent can actually see it. Yeah, what do you do here at the studio? Do you give a little background? Do you give a little background? Uh, New Media Comedy Studios, we, uh, we make videos, we rent space, we um, <laughs> run podcasts, this being one of them. Uh, we do all the things. All, all the things. things. And uh, yeah, a full photo studio, full video studio. Um, but mostly, we just have craft services where we <laughs> make sure that Mike has enough of the uh, jelly gumdrops to just make him happy. I have two missing teeth now because of all the cavities. <laughs> yeah, they just will pop out. The best um, thing about the studio is just random porn stars are here. Yeah, every once in a while, a porn star will wander through, and, and which is amazing because we don't shoot porn. But we shoot things that are porn adjacent. PG porn. We shoot like the commentary track for porn. Yeah. That's what everyone loves about porn, right? Mm-hmm. The stuff you people actually mute, that's what we make here. Yeah. So what was one of the emails this week that you got to... Oh, my God. So a video we posted two years ago, someone decided that they hated it this week. <laughs> it's always good when you catch up with the current stuff, people. I got to tell you that. It's a good throwback Thursday feeling, right? Yeah. Yeah, except it was on Tuesday. Um, and uh, personally, my favorite part of it, was they wanted to know, um, in the video, it's, uh, if you go on our, um, our, our YouTube page. New uh, Media Comedy TV on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, there's a video called Snowblind, which is a parody of the uh, 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 Blurred Lines the video. Blurred Lines, yeah. And uh, we have Santa Claus dancing with some dancers. And it, it is, like much of what we produce here, epically silly shit. Yeah, just funny little. Yeah. But somebody wanted to know why I had a, uh, the one gorgeous blonde hanging out with a bunch of trannies and there a fat old dude. trannies in that video? No, there weren't any trannies in that video. <laughs> but I, I just loved it. And I loved that they used the word 
trannies because you know you want your hate speech to be real hate speech and not cleaned up. Yeah. You know, it would have been so much, for me, it would have been so much worse as, why'd you have the hot blonde with the group of transsexual men to women? <laughs> that would have offended me more than the use of the slur. That's a slur now, right? Mm-hmm. Trannies. All right. That I think just by a the popular end, internet search. But. End of the, uh, 2020, I believe every word will be a slur. Yeah. The. Hey. Hey. You can't say Get that. out of here. All right, What's so wrong with you saying the... That's a good time, the middle of the summer, to get a nice Christmas hate fucking... <laughs> Christmas hate mail in the middle of the summer. <laughs> what else? I, I had a dad wanting to know if I could do a model shoot for his daughter. Ooh. Um, who's, his daughter is 15 years old and getting into modeling. And um, wanted bikini and lingerie. And I'm there like, I, I, I could shoot her in a bikini if you really want me to, but why you'd want... Me, a creepy old guy to shoot your 15-year-old daughter in, in a bikini, I don't know. But I can't shoot her in lingerie because there are laws yeah. <laughs> that prohibit such shit. Do they even make laws. lingerie for 15-year-olds? I'm assuming it's underoos. Yeah. I'm assuming it's underoos. Yeah, I think that was a trap. That guy was in the FBI. Do you think so? <laughs> Just say, yeah, you're going to take this gig? No. <laughs> no. I turn down about two-thirds of the photography gigs that come to the studio's doors. If they wanted to uh, use you, where would they reach you? Um, just contact me here at the studio. What's your name on the studio? Uh, uh, this, well, if you uh, contact info at uh, newmediacomedyworldwide.com, new you will find me. This is just going to be a plug show. Just get the yeah, first thing and all the plugs. all the things out. So they're only going to listen to the first episode. Yeah. Mike Lang and Comedy on Instagram. Send me your titties. Yeah, nobody's going to do that. You're probably big fat guys, Well, <laughs> Here you go, fucking stupid idiot. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good that you got hate mail. I get a lot of hate mail here. What you, do you remember your personal favorite one? My personal favorite hate mail? Like something you kind of laughed at but didn't actually get a... Um, I had somebody list a whole bunch of diseases they wanted me to have. And um, you ended up already having half of them. They spelled all of them wrong. <laughs> I want you to get happies. Yeah. It, it just, it, it, when you get hate mail that you can actually correct the spelling and send it back, <laughs> Wait, that's this good is hate what mail. I want you to have. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think on this podcast, we want to do like top five things that are bothering us at this moment. Mm hmm. Maybe, you know, like a little thing happening in the news or just some idiot staring at you the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Look, I got a little intro music. Do you? Do you like that? I'm liking it. I'm, I'm actually liking it. It sounds like <laughs> Satan's gargling on cock. All right, what was the first thing that bothered us? We were, we were looking through the paper. Mm -hmm. Officials say vaping co-pilot caused Air China flight to drop 21,000 feet. <laughs> he dropped the pipe. <laughs> he dropped the pipe. Yeah, he, people, I don't know why anyone vapes. Mike is actually vaping as he's discussing vaping. This is a little guava mint. Is it guava mint vape? Yeah, guava mint vape. Does that it smells like you? somebody shit on a plant. <laughs> it really does smell like somebody shat on a plant. Is know. it shit or shat on a plant? I think if they already did it, it would be shat. And it changes color of the vape? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's bright, shiny object and cancer all rolled into one. <laughs> That's what sucks about it. It's like vapes have only been around like three years. This thing probably just cuts your balls off or something. I'm going to have holes in my throat. because There's no test yet. Yeah, that is true. According to the outlet, the unnamed air co-pilot... Tried to hide the fact that he was smoking in the cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> What's the funny part of that to you, cock or pit? Probably both, because both of mine are just dis disgustingly wet right now. Yeah. And attempted to turn off a fan to prevent the smoke from reaching the passenger cabin without telling the captain, but accidentally turned, on the AC, uh, no, turned off the AC unit instead. So I guess it got really, really hot. So he turned off the AC unit, he dropped the plane 2,100 feet. 
The blunder caused oxygen levels in the cabin to fall and triggered the release of oxygen masks from the cabin ceiling, which passengers soon photographed and started sharing on social media. Because that's the first thing if you're about to die. You share everything on yeah, social you gotta media. Share. Look at my oxygen mask. It was a tweet with the duck lip. And, uh... No, we're going to get to the social media one where the, oh, yeah. <laughs> the real one. Crew members were then quickly forced to drop the plane by 21,000 feet before returning to a safe cruising altitude. Now, if you were on that fucking plane and you found out someone was vaping, and that's why you almost died. That's why my balls were in my throat at the moment. Because <laughs> your plane drops 2,100 feet, your, your balls are in your throat. Yeah, but they're Asian. Mm-hmm. They got little small... Uh... Smaller balls? <laughs> they went into their nostrils. <laughs> that's going to be hate mail right there. there. Right them. there, that's going to be hate mail. They're not going to hate mail. They're smart. They'll just put the IT and fucking explode my podcast somehow. Yeah, probably. Oh, God. Oh, my God. What was the worst plane experience? You've been all over the world. You were mm-hmm. a stand-up comedian. Mm-hmm. How long? 30 years. HBO. Comedy everything. Central. Everything. Everything. Where have you been? Uh, that's a horrible plane ride. All right. So I had to fly from my, my most favorite plane ride of misery that I can never tell you about was I had to fly from Roanoke, Virginia to Athens, Georgia. So two horrible places you didn't want to be. Yeah. Well, I actually, I, I kind of like Roanoke. But, um, but <clears throat> I had to get, I got to the airport, I want to say two hours early. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever been to the Roanoke airport, our podcast studio is bigger than the <laughs> Roanoke airport. We're in a basement in fucking Rahway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so... With all of that said, it, <laughs> I get there, and there's this little puddle jumper of a plane on the runway, and there's a guy with overalls that looks like he's Jed Clampett's illegitimate son on a ladder with a screwdriver oh, literally God. screwing the propeller into it. And I'm there like, oh, I pity the poor son of a bitch that's got to get on that plane. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours later, I was a poor son of a bitch who had to get on that plane. Did you look into the cockpit and it's him <laughs> flying it? No, luckily, Gunther wasn't flying the <laughs> aircraft. But, oh my God, it was fucking scary. Truly, truly scary. Did everyone on the plane have the same reaction, just staring at this thing like, oh God. Yeah. That's it, good. It's always, but, but here's the whole thing. So for two hours, I'm literally watching it and mocking. Like, what? <laughs> what, what dumb fuck's getting on that Yeah, thing? And that was the dumb fuck. Mm. That, to me, was the most harrowing uh, plane ride. I, I also flew on Emirates Air to Dubai during Ramadan. <laughs> and they were feeding all the non-Muslim passengers. So it was just you and someone else getting it, fed? It was me and the other three comics. And so they were feeding us, and everyone looking at us with, like, eyes of death. Yeah. And that air is getting circulated, so they're fucking smelling it all, the whole flight. Yeah, and I, I think I had bacon wrapped in bacon. <laughs> and you didn't even want it, right? Just to, yeah. Just to prove a point. Yep. Uh, and next story, we were watching this before and laughing. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so CNN fucking... Oh, you got to go to the CNN website to watch this story. Oh, yeah. American model, Instagram model. Instagram model, which is not a real model. That's like saying saying an Instagram model is a model is like saying a stripper is a dancer. They're exotic dancers. (laughs) Yes, because naked is very exotic. Just dancing on your dick. (laughs) So an Instagram model gets bitten by a shark. (laughs) (laughs) And part of the story is her fucking father's recording it. Mm-hmm. Instead of trying to save his dear old fucking big titty daughter, he's fucking recording her getting her arm bitten off. Because apparently yeah. her fingers look like... Apparently her fingers look like a fish. Yeah, that's why her titties are only getting snapped. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like a perfect holiday photo opportunity. Crystal yeah. blue waters, a pack of docile nursing sharks... Blazing on the docks of Santa Kai in the Bahamas. Yeah. I hate this next one. But when the Instagram model, Catherine Cunty, 
Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's not her real name. I don't know. Zakunti or something? I don't know. Uh-huh. She waded in the... Sh- <laughs> She mm-hmm. waded in to join the sharks. One clamped his jaws on her arm and pulled her underwater. Daddy, it felt like 15 people were pulling me. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this lady? Don't go in the water. Would you ever go in the water where anywhere near a shark? No. No. Is there, is there a reason? What would make you go into the water? I'd be her dad. I'd be like, you were dumb enough to get in. You're on your own. <laughs> they like my ass. Yeah. Next thing I knew, I was underwater, and I felt this, and the adrenaline just kicked in. What is going on? <laughs> it is a nurse shark. Don't they not bite? Apparently, they do. <laughs> well, we now have empirical evidence that says they do indeed bite. Well, I found out that uh, sharks, you know, through my research, love silicone. So, they try to bite at titties. And I could do that. The 19-year-old California model is no stranger to the beach. It says she was inspired to swim with the sharks by similar pictures she's seen before. That's it. It's just for the attention. Mm-hmm. I need my hashtag to have shark water swimming. But she's an Instagram model. She should know she should Photoshop herself into the shark tank, not, not actually go in the shark tank. You Photoshop yourself in with Justin Bieber. Yeah. Photoshop yourself in with the shark. Am I the only person that... Yeah, but this was her excuse. It seems safe. And I've seen all these photos, so I totally thought it was okay. You ever see a photo of someone getting their ass bitten? <laughs> or are you not watching a Nat Geo channel? I, I saw a photo of somebody getting shot at a firing squad, so it was totes safe. Yeah. <laughs> Incredibly totes. legit. What's the hashtag? <laughs> Shark bite titty? <laughs> oh, God. When her boyfriend's father began to take photos of Sakunti, Floating among the sharks, he unwittingly captured the sharks emerging. He didn't unwittingly capture that. Do you think he was taking photos for her or photos for him? It was for him. <laughs> yeah, like, go ahead. Put your legs up, yeah. The gold digger's going underwater. <laughs> yeah, go dig for some fucking shark teeth now, you asshole. All right, don't got don't got don't gotta worry about this one, me and my daughter in law. I bet she went there trying to kinda get bit, because you know how viral she is now? Oh, yeah. She's on CNN before she would just been on some fucking guy from Dubai's website <laughs> that he flew her out there to bang her. Oh, God. The photo Which was show. most of what was on my airplane that day. <laughs> it was probably one of him. Yes, come by, come by. Yeah, we'll cut that out. The owner of the marina said the nurse sharks were typically docile, but the sharks could have been feeding and might have mistaken her fingers for food. <laughs> the fuck kind of fingers do her things look like? They look like little worms around fucking those Arab dicks. Well, you never know what an Instagram model's fingers look like because they use their hands to take the <laughs> selfies. It's never in the shot. I know what a tits, nose, and fucking lips look like. And, and they were lunch. All... And you also know what a lunch <laughs> looks like. And they were all bought by the same doctor. <laughs> oh, these women are already turned off the podcast. Oh, yeah. We now have two listeners. Despite her ordeal, she does not warn... Others from repeating experience, but urging caution. If you do swim with them, if you have the opportunity, do take into consideration for risks. Like they're fucking sharks and they're going to bite you. Yeah. I love that. She doesn't tell people not to do it. Come on, what are you going to do? It's Instagram. You got to do it for the gram. Good bitch. It's tote safe. (laughs) Mine was just an anomaly. I don't think her totes were safe. <laughs> oh, God. God. This one I don't know too much about. All right. Papa John scandal. Was the scandal that you're fucking selling microwavable pizza as fucking $13 prize possessions? Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever had Papa John's. I go to actual pizza stores. We live in New York. Yeah. You... <laughs> If you're ordering Domino's or Papa John or Pizza Hut in New York, just admit you live in a trailer. Yeah, and just admit you're fucking high as shit. Yeah. And you have $12. <laughs> and you ran out of Ilios. Although, I will tell you, having been drunk on the road on occasion, Domino's very effective. The only time I order Domino's is when we're working overnights. It's the only fucking thing open at 3 in the morning. I can see that. 
deliver it to the hospital and pass it past the people that haven't eaten in fucking three days in the stretchers. <laughs> you know, fucking so every time I'm eating anything in the hospital, they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, sorry, I'm, I don't have your t- disease. Yeah. <laughs> but if you cough on my pizza, I might so <laughs> turn your head that way, please. Oh, God. <laughs> the founder and public face of Papa John's is out. John Schrenader. Isn't that John Skater with an N? Yeah. yeah. I think he likes the N. <laughs> he resigned as the chairman of the pizza company after word got out that he used the N-word during a conference call in May. How the fuck is it just coming out now? Well, you know, it takes a good three months to realize someone's not paying the blackmail money. <laughs> what money? The blackmail money. To who? The blackmail? <laughs> <laughs> Schneider admitted he used the words while participating in a role-playing exercise. Jim, you want to have a role-playing exercise? Unless the other side of that role-play was a beautiful woman calling him Massa, there's no socially acceptable role-playing that he could have ever done. All right, now let's just see. Me and you are hooded up. We got our gats. We're going to run into a store. What's the first word you're going to say? <laughs> I almost got you. Oh, we got our gats, we run into a store, what's the first word we I, I think I might say, what kind of pizza you got outside of Papa John's? Because that shit sucks. Let me get my money back for this fucking cardboard with cheese on it. Oh, God. Little Caesar's pizza better than Papa John's. And it's $5. Yeah. I got a picture of me with seven pies. <laughs> with seven $5 pies? Yeah, I forgot what it was for. Probably a Tuesday or... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but if you go to Little Caesars and you ask for two, they give you four. <laughs> like, just get the just, just, go, go. We need to get rid of this. Eat it before it fucking <laughs> devours itself. Uh, race, yeah, what was it? it was like a prevent public relation crisis. They did a role playing. I don't understand. I don't understand any conference call in a public. Like even if we had a, po- a conference call here, that word would never be brought up. And this is a comedy place. I, I honestly think you would bring it up, Mike. Yeah, but I won't say it recorded. <laughs> yeah, we'd be swearing up not yeah. to say it on tape. Did you remember I just turned the mics off for two minutes and yelled it? Yeah. He actually yodeled it. <laughs> it ended in lehi hoo. Lehi hoo. He apologized. Race, racism has no place in our society, he said. Racism has no place in my pizza shop. <laughs> this is so dumb. Has somebody checked with Peyton Manning to get his his opinion? I think that's very important right now. I think we need need to call Peyton Manning. Peyton, what do you think of this? I don't even know who they are. (laughs) They told me to say three words in front of a green screen once, and that was it. Oh, God. Yeah. It it, it just... If you are tremendously successful, then let's face it. The guy owns Papa John's. Pretty successful. There's a microphone, a telephone, or some other kind of recording equipment in front of you. It's nothing but puppies and rainbows. If you have $40,000 in the bank, that's how it should be. There's someone that's going to be trying to sue you. Yeah. So just don't say anything. This is why we can say whatever we want. Yeah. My Collectively, we got nine bucks. <laughs> yeah, my bank account's in the negatives already. Yeah. It took me nine months to get an easy pass because I needed a fucking <laughs> good account. Yeah, you need to get that they can actually pull stuff from. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I have Easy Pass. I'm not sure whose Easy Pass it is, yeah. but I have one. Shadow, who starred in the company's commercials because he's a fucking egomaniac, yep. stirred controversial last year when he said Papa John's sales were hurt by the NFL's handling of pl- players kneeling during the national anthem. Uh huh. What's your opinion on that? Kneeling during the national anthem? Uh, if you really have a problem with people kneeling during the national anthem, then you're an idiot. It, it, it's a fucking song. It's a song. It's not our country. It's not the soldier. It's a song. You want to kneel during that? Kneel during that. You want to kneel during, you know, <laughs> during, you know, Hey Jude? Kneel during Hey Jude. It's a fucking song. The only thing is, it's like every time I kneel, my leg hurts. I'd rather just sit for fucking the protest. Just give me a chair. Look, I find it incredulous that people are pissed that NFL protesters are kneeling during the song 
when it's playing at home and you're watching it, your fucking head is in the refrigerator getting a beer, or you're taking a piss before kickoff. Or you're not... That's a great point. Yeah. And you know what? If you really are the person that needs to stand, you know, during the national... Oh, say can you see... Are you standing, motherfucker? Because if you didn't, weren't, then you're a hypocrite. That's all there is to it. That's what I do now. Whenever somebody tells me that they're pissed that they, people don't, the people are kneeling during the, the, uh, the Star Spangled Banner, I start singing it immediately. And I do the whole song. I've done it on radio. You do four, the second verse too? I, I've done it on radio four times now. And, and, and literally people are like, you're just being a dick. Yes, yes. Because you're being a stubborn asshole. Because you're not standing right now. Yeah. Are you standing? Yeah, come on. It's the radio. You, you can lie to me. Lie to me and tell me you were standing. Do you know what sucks? What? There's someone in the world that stands at home during the fucking <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance. He's 95 fucking... years old and served in World War I. Leave him alone. Well, actually, if you're 95, you couldn't have served in World War I. You'd be too young. I knew that. Did you? Yeah. No. I don't know. I don't fucking... No. World War I. You, you weren't doing the math. I was like... 50 years ago, right? Yeah. What, what, what was it? 1969. Summer of Love, right? Yeah. That's why yeah. they made that song. Yeah. That's, that's all this. What the world did you tell us love sweet love? That's what they did when they celebrated it ending, right? It just sucks that like sports has nothing to do with anything that has to do with America. Even if they want to make it involved like that. The only reason they came out, what was it, like four years ago? The mm-hmm. U.S. Army paid them to come out. Yeah. So fucking... It's not like the NFL really gave a shit before then. No, the NFL wants the cash. Let them have the cash. Come on, we need you to sing the national anthem at your event because we need more dead soldiers. Uh, we uh, need to get recruitment numbers up. Oh God. You know what? We're not playing it in other places. You're not going to your concert hall and having it played. You're not going to the movie theater. You know, ladies and gentlemen, before Ant-Man, oh, say, can't. no. At each event, they put their, like, logo into it. Yeah, like. that's not happening. Ladies and gentlemen, please take a moment to celebrate our heroes as we rise with Ant-Man and the Wasp <laughs> for the Star Spangled Banner. It's just fucking ridiculous. But, uh... Hypocritical, hypocritical ass bags. In case you were wondering. Yes. And I know you are. I, I wonder about many things. The nation's third largest pizza chain yeah. said it would pick a new chairman soon. Really? Yes. I hope it's Vince McMahon. <laughs> uh, I wonder if they're going to hire a black guy. Oh, of course. <laughs> black woman. That's it. it. Needs to happen. I think it would be. Why yeah. not? Black women know about their pizza. I think so, too. You got to get a little old lady, little Italian. So if we can't get like a black woman. We get like a little old black, a uh, little old traveling lady in black dress. Is that what you want? Black face. That's what they would do. I just want some company to just go off the fucking rocket and do some dumb shit like that. Imagine Papa John's had a black face fucking protest like. You know, I had this debate. I I teach television writing class in the city, and I had this debate because one of my students put in a joke in a spec script for a. Uh, the spec script for a sitcom, actually, Broad City. Uh, not Broad City. Um, what's, what's the one with the two girls, Abby and Alana, on Comedy Central? Mm-hmm. Uh, what, whatever that one is. Um, but it, it's a comedy. It's an edgy comedy. And in it, they encounter a Spanish dude who, for Halloween, is wearing blackface. And I had 14 students in the class, and two of them lost their mind. Blackface is never funny. You can't have blackface. You know, it's, it's the most offensive thing ever. You just can't have that. Both white people. Both of them, yeah. Yeah. The five black people in the class couldn't give a crap. It's the white guilt that makes the fucking racism that stay racist for things that aren't racist. Yeah, but, you know, I, I do think, you know, you, you got to put an end to this kind of stuff. But the other part of it is, man... Just don't be a douche. There's no discussion about it. That's what really sucks. There's no real discussion about racism. It's just if something's a little bit racist, 
you're just penalized to the top. You're making apologies all over the place, and then you're gone forever. Yeah, the problem is you can't legislate hearts and minds. You know, I'm one of these people when somebody says, oh, you don't think that anybody should be able to fly a Confederate flag? No, I want you. I want you to have a Confederate flag. I want you to have a Confederate bumper sticker. I want to be able to point to my kids and go, that house, don't trick or treat there. Stay away from there. Yeah. You know, I <clears throat> do I think it should be funded with public money? Nope. But, you know, if Gunther wants to have a live free or, you know, live free or die or rebel till death bumper sticker on the back of his 1977 Dodge pickup truck, go for it, Gunther. And then fix the fucking plane at a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the other, that's even better because then you're not hiding them. You know no. exactly where they are. And, and if we know where they are, we can avoid them. Yeah, instead of mixing into the public. Yeah. It, like, if I know somebody doesn't like me, I prefer to know that they don't like me than, than to, you know, find out about, oh, you hated me for 10 years. I <laughs> you could have told me. I wouldn't have to talk to you for nine of them. Yeah. <laughs> I did, we could have stayed away from each other and had a perfectly fine life. Yeah. It is true, though. I, yeah. I really wish you could just have everyone do whatever they want, and then you can monitor them. <laughs> yeah. Just, I, I want to stay away from you. Yeah. Like, I had one ex-girlfriend um, who said, you know, on the first night that we were getting set to fool around, said, I'm into something weird sexually. Yes, I need to know that. I need to know the weird stuff you're in. Probability is I'm going to be into it, too, you know, she goes, I want, you to, I want you to punch me during sex. And I'm like, what? She said, like, I want you to punch me. And I'm there like, you mean spank you? A little yeah. playful whack on the... I, I'll, I'll do that all day long. But no, she wanted me to like ball up my fist and punch her in the face. And I'm like, I'm not into that. I don't want to do that. Do you still want to go out? And she's like, yeah, absolutely. Not everyone's into that. So cut to... Not everyone's into that. Not everyone's like, into oh, that. Not everyone's into that. Cut into later that same evening, as we're fooling around, she decides to get me in the mood by punching me in the face. <laughs> Here's what I learned from that. I had the information to walk away a couple of hours earlier, yeah. and I did not. Should have used your fist in a different way. <laughs> Oh, uh, you got to get consent for that. Yeah. That's what you need consent for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not punching her in the fucking face, but... Uh, How does someone get up by being punched? Like, I'm I, not kidding. She wanted to be punched. In the, not, not like a playful tap. Like, would you please punch me? That just means somewhere back in the day. It's almost beating the shit out of her while having sex with her. <laughs> and she that, was like, shit, I came to that. <laughs> that is just way too much. Yeah. So then you punched her in the face and what? <laughs> no, I immediately left. No, yeah. Like it, the second, the second somebody hits me, I have two responses. I either hit them back or I leave. Yeah. I try and leave if it's a person that I care about or, or if it's female, if it's a female. What's good Although is I will, I will admit there have been women who've hit me and I've hit them back. I've never hit a woman. I have hit a woman back. All right. And front. <laughs> I've, I've hit that if you know what I mean. You know no, what I'm no. I've been very lucky. I've never had a. I've avoided pretty much all the crazies in my life. All the crazy women? Yeah, like I. Well, that's because you just don't get laid. Yeah, I don't fucking get anything. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. usually always have a girlfriend. If you took the crazy ones out of my shopping list, my basket would be empty. Just looking at your hand. Pretty much. And even that gets crazy sometimes. <laughs> I that might punch myself. Back. Yeah, like all the ones that are like super crazy, I've fucked that up somehow. Oh, but then man. I find out they're crazy later. I'm like, oh, thank God I'm such a dick that I got the crazy one to leave. You know what's scary when you meet one that you think is sane and the scary and the crazy doesn't come out till like three or four months later? Yeah. Because you know they've been hiding that for three or four months. And the it's about behavior. to erupt like Vesuvius. That's going to be a, a Vesuvius. Of, of insane. What's good is you go back in your mind of all the times that they acted normal, and you're like, oh, they were faking when I got them pissed. Yeah. That, <laughs> they were on their best that, behavior. That one wasn't real. Oh, that one wasn't real. Yeah. That, one, that one might have been real. Yeah, it's been like a good four months now. Since you've gotten any? Yeah. Might have been four hours for me. <laughs> 
Is that that girl with that left with the black eye? <laughs> it knocked her right across the face. <laughs> what else we got on our fucking thing? Uh, Trump in Britain. I have no idea anything about this. Yeah, Trump is in Britain. The only reason I saw is because all <coughs> over fucking my Instagram feed is a giant floating fucking Trump. All right, so there is a giant orange dirigible floating over the streets of London. And to protest Trump, they made a giant orange dirigible. We were talking about it before. How do you make that? Who do you know? Like, if you wanted to make that right now, Jim, and you're in the movie business, you know people that make props. Uh, yeah. Could you have anyone fucking make that right yeah, now? Go, hey, this is Bob, House of Props. Tell me what you need. I'll call you back. <laughs> hey, Bob, I need a giant 80-foot floating <laughs> naked Donald Trump. With one I, eyebrow up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I misunderstood what you said. You said you needed a What? If you called Gilbert Godfrey, what would he say? <laughs> Why is Trump naked in the balloon? I would think the balloon would have the decency to wear another balloon. Did I blow out the levels? No, it sounded good. Are your ears bleeding? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah. If you do don't I... do a good Gilbert Godfrey unless you blow out someone's ears. <laughs> like... well, the key word there is blow. But the point I'm trying to make is... Um, Look, there's got to be, the whole world knows he's insane. Like, yeah. the whole world. You go to another country and they're protesting. If another, if somebody from, if a leader from another country came here, we would hardly fucking notice. The Prime Minister of England could be jogging down Fifth Avenue. People would be going, oh, another fucking tourist. I mean, that's about as bad as it would get here. 100%. I have no idea what anyone's here. Yeah. Fucking Obama was like by my school once. I had no idea. He was down by Sandy once. When Sandy happened? Yeah. I had no idea he was there. I was like, why are the fucking people here? That's it. If you really are paying attention into anything politics world, I have no idea what the fuck. Oh, God. I, unfortunately, I have to pay attention because I, I, need to get, uh, I, need, I need to get suspended from my regular gig on occasion, which is which what happens. I do radio calls for a network, and I... I the first of the month comes, and they call me up, and they go, Jim, are you going to behave this month? And I go, exactly the same way I behaved last month. They put me on a phone call. They say, don't get yourself suspended. And it's gotten to the point where two phone calls in every month, I'm suspended for the rest of the month. That's pretty good. That's a good day deal. Like, they pay yeah. you. Yeah. You're out in a half hour, and you don't have to work for another month. And you do it from home. I can't tell you how many times I've been suspended for shit I've said while I'm naked. Not a lot of people could say that. No. Dear God, sitting in my underwear making fun of Chris Christie. How many people? I know a lot of people that want that job. Chris Christie. What has Trump done in the past, like, monthish that's really pissed you off? Breathing. Him breathing is pissing me off. Just breathing. Detention camps for children, separating children from parents at the border. Saying that he's not going to, and then just speeding up the process to split them up. Um, telling illegal immigrants that want to have rejoined their children that they have to pay for their own lawyers to get their children back. And you've been your whole life a Republican, usually, right? Like, I like from that mindset, you're not like a diehard, bleeding liberal no. who just hates Trump because Trump's alive. No, uh, Trump was the reason why I left the Republican Party. Um, I was what's known as an old-fashioned Rockefeller Republican. Like, you know, keep, keep our country safe, keep our city safe, you know, tough on crime, and I just don't give a fuck about anything else. Yeah. Do, do what you want to do as a private citizen, just I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, that's the way it should be. Yeah, but no, he, ca he came along and... I just had to clarify that point because we're yeah. just going to have people going, you yeah, fucking oh, liberal. Yeah, I'm, I'm a libtard. Here's the whole thing. Facebook has, um, Facebook has designations. Like you could go in mm -hmm. and see how they believe you are politically. Really? Yeah. Like they break it down to an algorithm. They're going to think I'm a crazy conspiracy theorist. <laughs> Probably because you're a crazy conspiracy theorist. <laughs> there you go. Trump's just a lizard. So yeah. Trump's a lizard. Anyway. The lizard in the White House. Yeah. Um, and four years ago, uh, they had me as ultra conservative. I checked again about two months ago, you know, full left wing liberal. And transsexual, right? Pretty much at this <laughs> point. They just, you know, 
can't, apparently you can't hate Trump without being a libtard. Which isn't true, because I think everyone hates him. My dad is the only like, person I know that likes Trump. And every time he ha- gives me a reason, I understand his reason. It has nothing to do with, like... Your dad hates black people. That's fine. That's it, yeah. Pretty much. It's okay. Yeah. My dad was uh, 20 years a drug and alcohol counselor. Oh, God. So, yeah, that's, he has a lot of uh, hatred for, I guess, poor people. <laughs> <laughs> hatred for poor people. That's all colors, though. Yeah. He's very equal, quality friendly. Yeah. He hates people who aren't green. Yeah. <laughs> so what's to say? Uh, hordes so, of demonstrators began to cover, converge in central London on Friday morning, intent on mocking U.S. President Donald Trump yeah. on his only full day of business with British leaders on what has been dubbed a working visit to the United Kingdom. So that's why he's in the U.K., Apparently, he's opening up a new golf course there. <laughs> Who's paying for that? Probably, probably us. Not our, not, not our taxes. We could probably get, like, maybe a couple tees. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Uh, our visual corner store of the anti-Trump protest on Friday, which includes several organized marches by various groups, is a giant balloon depicting the U.S. leader as an angry, screaming, orange baby in a diaper. Clutching a cell phone with Twitter on the screen. Do you think that should become a law? No Twitter if you're a politician? Yeah, I think so. Tell the truth. Wouldn't you like to see at the end of Trump's visit them to explode the balloon and candy flies out like a giant fucking pinata? Yeah, but that wouldn't come out of him, candy. No. It would just be fucking babies from the fucking... (laughs) All the missing babies. (laughs) Oh, God. We found them. They're in England now. It's your problem. Now imagine the world storm 10 years ago if this happened. Oh, God. Like, even if Obama had children, like, what would be said about him? Yeah. And you don't really hear anyone going crazy over this. No. But like, this is Hitler-esque. Yeah. Hitler or Jace. It's Hitler light. Yeah. He oh. should grow the mustache. You think Trevor should grow the mustache? What, are, what is anyone going to do? He, has, he just did it. He already has the comb over. <laughs> just needs that fucking dark green brown suit. God. <laughs> but he'd get his made in China. <laughs> do you remember when he was on, what was it, Conan? Or Jay Leno? Yeah. We're talking about the ties? Yeah. Like, just there's your bullshit right there. <clears throat> and because we're talking about Trump, we need to talk about his boo. Yeah. Stormy Daniels arrested. Stormy Daniels was arrested uh, while working in a strip club, and the police have now said they made a mistake in arresting her. Because, you know. I really just think it was hardcore Republicans saw her and found an opportunity. Yeah, why not? Those are assholes everywhere. <laughs> Charges against adult film actress Stormy Daniels for allegedly touching three undercover detectives while performing at an Ohio strip club were dismissed Thursday. How do you get arrested for doing a good job? And you're, if you're at a strip club and a girl touches your dick, they, that's, there's no better strip club. Yeah. I didn't have to pay $20 for this. <laughs> she just comes over, you want to dance, it just touches your dick. There's nothing better because I'm going to say no anyway. Yeah. Do you take money in quarters and pennies? Do you take Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to pay you in Bitcoin, please. Can you pay for your stripper with Bitcoin? I'm going to try. <laughs> Daniels, who gained notoriety after suing Donald Trump following an alleged affair, had faced three minor counts of illegally touching a patron. What kind of crimes? What are we doing in America that these are crimes? Why are we so anti-fucking sex? This is America. Sex? If a porn star wants to give a patron a handy in the back of an Ohio strip club, dear God, it's not hurting anybody. Except maybe her hand. <laughs> She has to do that every patron she sees. Well, I think it's only select patrons. I had my nipples rubbed by uh, Nadia White. Were they? Yeah, when we, when we did the TV show. Uh, ah, that's right, she did. Watching remember. you on Amazon Prime coming up. Yep. What other shows do we have on Amazon Prime? Oh, we, we have Living in Exiles on Amazon Prime, and Comics Watching Comics is on Amazon Prime, and Giga Hoses on Amazon Prime. We just have a whole lot of shows on Amazon Prime that you should go to. 
And later this year, uh, um, Turnpike uh, Comedy Festival. Yeah, and uh, also Gail's New Boyfriend, our first movie, Ooh. will be on there as well. What is that about? Uh, it is a Like woman, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think you might know. The woman uh, that has a really bad breakup snaps, kidnaps a ventriloquist dummy, and has a torrid affair with it while a massive police manhunt or puppet hunt ensues. <laughs> puppet hunt. Puppet hunt. All right, that's our top five. Is that the whole top five? I'm going to start. Maybe I should have paused. I could have actually put in fucking music. You can go back and hit the pause button. Yeah, I'm not going to. No, it's all going up in one film. <laughs> Bell swoop. All right, that's our top five segment. Uh, can I can I add something to the hate list? Of course. Did you just get this now? I saw your phone light up. Yeah, I'm watching a kitten nursing a guinea pig. Why? Isn't that like cannibalism? Just <laughs> looks like he's getting <laughs> his dick sucked. <laughs> yeah, come on, you little guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> that's why they Give call you a me. pig, right? Yep. Fucking guinea bastard. Hey, 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 I'm going to suck on your dick. <laughs> uh, I didn't think I'd be making a guinea pig dick sucking joke today, but... Hey, listen, we go, where, we go where the work takes us. Now that we're doing some jokes, Yeah. you have stories upon stories upon stories. Yeah. And one of my favorite comedians is uh, George Carlin. Mm-hmm. Didn't you say once that he uh, worked on a joke with you? Um, <clears throat> George Carlin, all right. Uh, and, and I will tell this story because I, I, I let a, other comics talk about it. I um, Early in my career, I had written a piece which is basically the best way to describe it is a comics piece. One of those jokes that when you start the bit, other comics run into the room to watch it. Mm -hmm. But more because they know how much the audience is going to hate it than because, <laughs> you know, they're really in, enticed. Um, but it was one of those jokes when if I would start the bit... The bar would empty out. Everyone would walk in the room and watch me do it. So ego-wise, when you know you have one of those and you're all 20 years old, you do it yeah. every chance you get. I'm standing on stage at Catch a Rising Star in New York, and I start the bit. And the whole bar empties out. Mm -hmm. And as the bar is emptying out, George Carlin walks in. And he's... Is this the first time you ever seen him? <laughs> yep. Yeah. First time... Well, I've, I'd seen him as a, a fan. Yeah. But, but George Carlin walks into the place and... They told me that when he walked in and he saw the comics going in, he asked the bartender what's happening, and, and the bartender said, oh, there's a bit that Jim does that all the comics love. So then he walked in the room. I had no idea he was there. Otherwise, my next few words would have been, hamana, 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 hamana. 20 years uh, old, and Carlin's there. Yeah. So this is what, 80? Oh, God, 85, early 85? So he's almost just on his little bit angrier. Yeah. He's doing his political. So I finished the bit, and I'm walking off stage, and it was a really dark room. So when you get off stage from the bright lights to the dark, you can't really see. And I just feel bony fingers grabbing my shirt, grabbing my best Bruce Springsteen concert T-shirt, which is what I wore like it was a fucking uniform back then. <laughs> but grabbing my shirt... And then pulling me aside and going, that's a great uh, bit. Let's write it better. And he reached into his bag. He pulled out sheets of paper and sat with me on the bit. And the bit was about why are women offended by the word cunt when it's the one thing that men love the most. And he rewrote the bit with me, and <laughs> I did the bit exactly how he wrote it. Yeah. And it bombed for me. It would have been great for him. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I... I got to write a bit with Carlin, even though it never really worked for me. Now, you think it just didn't work because it was just too Carlin-esque, like, and it wasn't you anymore? Yeah. Was, he rewrote it how it would have worked for him. Yeah. Which is, if I would have had his talent, he wouldn't have needed to rewrite it for me. <laughs> That's great, though, to have that experience oh, and yeah. memory. Do you have any uh, prior stories? I don't know if prior uh, was in New York too Pryor much. Prior was not in New were... York, but I did have a, a phone call with Richard Pryor. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of what else that, uh, what other, uh, my, my favorite show business story, like my favorite show business story is a Jackie Gleason story who pretty much everyone listening to the podcast, probably way too young to know who Jackie Gleason is. Nah, come on. New Honeymoon Year's Eve. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the one day a year they yeah. broadcast him. Um, 
so I grew up watching The Honeymooners on Channel 11, um, especially because I was one of those kids who rarely slept. Yeah. So I get booked to do a gig down in Florida. And How old are you at the time? Still younger career or? 21. I think this, the, the, these incidents both happened at around the same time. So, yeah, it was a magic time to be in comedy. Um, so I get booked down in Florida, and it was one of these things where the week was um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I would headline because I was new to headlining. Friday they brought in, I, I want to say it was Ron Shock to headline, and Saturday night, a one-night-only a one event was Bob Hope. So I featured for those two guys, but on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it was, it was me. Um, and it's at a horrible little club in Miami Beach. And I get down there, and the first night I go, okay, I'm a huge Jackie Gleason fan. Where's this place, the Fountain Blue? Because they know he has lunch there every day. Mm -hmm. So they tell me where the Fountain Blue is, and I walk over to the Fountain Blue, and I, I got my bag, and I got all my notes, and I'm going to do a little bit of writing, and I sit down at the Fountain Blue, and a hamburger was like $18 back Shit. then. Yeah, it was just... But I'm there like, I'm here to... Uh, fine. So I sit down, I order, I'm working on my stuff, and... Was it a good burger? Yeah, it's a burger. <laughs> um, but I, I sit down, I'm working on all my stuff, and all of a sudden, I hear the whole place start to buzz. It was like the mayor walked in. And yeah. it was Jackie Gleason walked in with his entourage and was shaking everyone's hand and, you know, kissing every baby and, you know, walking up to everybody that he knew in the restaurant. And he finally sat down at his table. And I called the waiter over, you know, because I, I, I grew up kind of in a show business culture a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I knew enough not to disturb him. And I said, does Mr. Gleason drink wine? And he goes, yes, he does. He said, what does he drink? He tells me the, the vintage. I said, how much is that a bottle? He told me I had the heart attack, but then I realized I had the money. So I sent him over a bottle of wine, and I sent him a note saying, hey, you inspired me to be a stand-up comic. Thank you so much for all the years of laughter. And I sent over the bottle of wine with the note. Think nothing of it. About, I want to say 15 minutes later, I'm still working on my stuff. I hear, is this seat taken? Shit. And I'm there like, ha, ha, ha. And he sat down and he talked to me for 10 minutes and I have no idea what we talked about. I have, that's Just what, like those eyes wide open kind of conversations where you're just staring at them like, yeah. It, there have been very few times in show business I fanboyed out. Mm -hmm. That was me fanboying out. It was like, no, no, this isn't happening. Not this. So we talked for 10 minutes. It couldn't have been more than 10 minutes. Probably closer to two, you know what <laughs> I mean? Could have been fucking, could have just said hi. <laughs> yeah, but it was, fucking Jackie Gleason sat at the table next to me, made conversation with me like I was a real fucking comedian, yeah. you know? And then he gets up and he goes back to his table, and I keep doing my stuff, and he and his entourage leave, and I'm still working on my stuff, and, you know, it's getting late, and I, I call over the waiter, and I say, hey, sir, I need the check, and he goes, oh, no, Mr. Gleason got the check. And what about his bottle of wine? He got that too. Wow. Yeah. That's just class and, you know. Yeah, not only did he make the memory, but he also. Yeah, like sealed the memory. Yeah. That's it, fucking awesome. It was amazing. Did you ask him how hot fucking his wife was? Yeah. She's so hot. Is she? I have no idea. Him, no, I know. I'm talking about uh, Honeymooners. Oh, Audrey Al Mouse, yeah. Uh, Alice! Yeah. That's Listen a, here, Norton. Norton! Yeah, me and my dad watch that show forever. Oh, Every yeah. Every time it's on, I still watch it. Yeah, it's, that's my favorite show business story. It's a good one. Yeah. I want to ask you one more, but that's, uh, that might be a good end. I was going to ask you Vince. <laughs> Meeting Vince. <laughs> Vince McMahon. This is a scary motherfucker. That would, I would be fanboy for Vince. There's only a few. Really? Probably Vince, Austin, uh... Yeah, maybe Vincent Austin and... I fanboyed out when I met Bruno Sammartino. Yeah. That, that time I fanboyed out. To me, that would be Austin. Yeah. You know, the, I, but uh -huh. I was running the production crew, so the fanboy out had to last, like, less than a minute. Yeah. It was like, huh, you have no idea how much of a daughter is to be true. All right, I need to go over here. I need to get you makeup. <laughs> I need to get... Like, I had a job to do. Yeah. 
But, oh, dear God. Yeah, that was... I fanboyed out with him. I, what was the production? Just uh... I, did, uh, I did some pickup work for ESPN, and they were doing a profile of senior citizens who were bodybuilders, and he's one of them. <laughs> so they, they said, yeah, there's this guy in Pittsburgh. We need you to go cover San Martino, somebody. Did you grab the guy by the yeah, throat? Like, did, who? Bruno San Martino? Like, yeah, yeah. But he's in Pittsburgh. Nobody wants the assignment. I want the assignment. Yeah, I'll, I'll I, walk there. Yeah, give me the assignment. Um, and... ESPN just hates wrestling, don't they? Yeah. They just fucking hate it. Here's the whole thing with that. I, I go out of my way to not take pictures with celebrities when I meet. It's like I don't want to. You don't want to have that kind of. I, I want us to be equals. Yeah. We're on equal footing. So, you know, like I take pictures with Chris Rock because we're friends. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We, we, but, like, when I meet somebody, I don't. Like, we're, this is back before the days of cell phones. I brought a camera with me. Like, sir, would you mind? Can we please take a picture? Would you mind? We got to put that picture in the podcast room. I got to find that picture. Yeah. But yeah, that picture should be, like, it should be huge and in the podcast room. Yeah. We got the Rusev. Yeah. That equals up, right? Let, let me put it to you this way. Not only should it be there because I'm with Bruno, it should be there because that's when I used to have hair. Yeah. <laughs> did he have hair in it? He, he did. Oh, so this is before he did the Bic. Yeah, it's before he did the Bic. Uh, good meeting or was it a... It was a great meeting. His exercise regime was fucking insane. Do you know those big monster truck tires? Mm -hmm. He would lay it down on the, in the end zone of a football field, back to the other end zone, take the tire and flip it over his head, walk around to the far side and flip it again and again and again and again until he got to the other end of the field and then back. That's how he did arms. And this is how old was he, you think? This is I think he had to be or? 64, 65. A fucking freak. He, he, um, I said, what do you do for, for back? He took me to a section where he had an anvil. Do you know those, like, cartoon anvils? Like mm -hmm. Acme anvil that we used to kill Wile E. Coyote? <laughs> he had an anvil there, and he had a 25-pound sledgehammer. And he did... I think it was 150 full-on hammers from each side. Holy shit. 150 left, 150 right. Should have just asked him to punch you, just see how... He... I, I couldn't lip the mallet. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I remember you did, I was trying to find the episode, but it's on our uh, other podcast, Nerds of the Squared Circle. Uh, we're on podcast. another podcast? Yeah, I think so. I agree. We get cut off a lot, but we we're... Do. I was trying to find the exact episode because you did like a 15 minute speech. Yeah. Like, the I'm day Bruno, he died. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Bruno, you know, that's one of my heroes growing up. That's one of the ones that I was like, man, man. The, like, when he died, that one hurt. Yeah. It was only, I mean, it was this year. Yeah, I know. That's how I'm going to feel when uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. What? Why? What? Uh,. I've only had one bad experience meeting someone Who? like Anthony Cumia oh. <laughs> from uh, Opie and Anthony. What did he do? It wasn't that he did anything bad. I just knew he did not give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> because I did the In Hot Water. It's yeah. on his uh, network. That was uh, earlier this year. Yep. And I'm on the show. In the middle of the show, I see the door open and he comes walking in. So I'm like, oh, shit. Because to me, that's uh, for podcasts yeah. and Radio, you know, it's like the king. Yeah. I wasn't really a huge Stern fan. Oh. Stern was, for me, a little bit afterwards. By the time yeah. I'm listening, you know, Stern already did it, all his greats. Yeah. Stern was in, in the decline at that point. Yeah. So when he was on at the same time, I was never even listening. And then uh, I come out of the show. So I'm like, all right, he knows I'm not just some fucking fan. You know, I was on the show. Maybe he'll treat me. So I put out my hand to shake it, and he shook my hand with the same hand. Do you know what I mean? Not the yeah. opposite. So it was a little weird, like, kind of hold my hand kind of handshake. And I was like, oh, okay. And then he was talking, uh, and he was getting ready to leave. He just did his show. And I was like, oh, can I take a picture? And he just did, like, a one-second more pause. <laughs> like, oh, uh, okay. And he did it. I got the picture, but. Like the bare minimum that, yeah. Yeah. But I could see he was in a rush. <clears throat> yeah. That's what I'm going to justify it in my head. <laughs> he was busy. 
There, there's, there's those celebrities that'll break your heart. There's a, a comic. I'll tell you who off the air, but I won't say it on the air. But one of my all-time favorites, like when I started saying I wanted to be a comic, this was one of the guys I listened to. One of the giants from the '70s, and he's a guy that works a lot around the Northeast. But I never got to work with him. Mm -hmm. Just never got to work with him. And then one night, he drunkenly stumbles into the comic strip while chasing a couple of female comics that he met at another place. So basically, this 60-year-old this dude is pussy hunting and stumbles into the club and goes to me, hey, can you put me on? And I'm there like, do you really want to go up? Yeah, like this, yeah. Yeah. Do you, I'm going to put you on because you're a legend. Yeah. But do you, can I get you a cup of coffee first? Can I, <laughs> you want to bang those girls and yeah. maybe... Like, why don't you chase the girls and, and come back here tomorrow? You're only going to ruin your chances by going on stage and having the girls see you. And he went on stage, and I got to introduce one of my comedy idols in a drunken, sloppy, whore-chasing day. Oh, God. Yeah. Famous? Yeah. Uh, sucks. Does everyone know about it, you think? Or that's kind of like a good hidden, only a couple comics uh, know? Only a couple of comics yeah. know. But because it, it, everyone, it's one of those ones that everyone knew I wanted to work with. I have, I, I have a very public bucket list of I wanted to work with these people. And, and I've worked with almost all of them. Yeah. That one was like, <clears throat> when he came in, I was like, oh, I'm getting it off my bucket list. And then yeah. when he, like, you could smell the alcohol before he started talking. And it's bad when you can smell the alcohol when they start talking, but if you can smell the alcohol before they start yeah. talking... The front row is just fucking oh. drunk. <laughs> oh, man. And, and, and I'm there... Because when you're introducing them, you also have to give them the full depth and breadth of, uh, of the legend that they are. So I'm, like, quoting, you know... And you know him from... Uh, his HBO specials, and you listen to this album, and, you know, I remember listening to this album when I was 12 years old, and... Uh, and then he walks on stage, and I'm like, oh, oh dear God. Can I, uh, can I try to guess? You can, but I, I won't tell you on air if you're right. Did he rape a bunch of people lately? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Trying no, to think no. if it was Cosby. No, no, no. <laughs> it's not Cosby. Right. And Cosby's odd because I met Cosby like dozens of times, but I never got to work on stage with him. Yeah. And to me, it's not like bucket list fulfilling until you can get on stage with him. And he's like the only living guy that I know I'll now never be able. Unless you go to jail. No, you guys it, could work on the same They're not going to let him work. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Well, Do you know he's a... still calling up theaters asking them if he can work? He's asking who? Theaters, if they'll book him. He's out right now? I thought he was in jail. No, no. He's under house arrest, but he's oh. allowed to go make a living if he wants to. Does anyone return the calls? I did a, a theater, you know, on New Year's Eve, and they were telling me that he's been calling there saying, you know, I'll do it as a straight door deal. I just need to work. I'm like... But why does he need to work? Comics want to work. I mean, is it a want? Not like I think uh, it's the a lawyers have ruined his fucking money? Well, I don't, I don't think he's burned through doing all of it. Yeah. But I, I think if you're a comic and you're hurting, what you want to do is get on stage. Yeah. Let it out. Yeah. Fucking Hannibal Barris. He's the one that revealed all that. I mean, it was pretty much open. Everyone knew. But why was it that one clip that made it? I guess it's just the internet. Just yeah. a couple of sites got on it, and CNN was fucking, oh, we need a new story, and we don't want to work. We'll steal the blogger's story. Uh, has there been a blonde bit by a shark? Nope, go with the Hannibal Burr story. <laughs> oh, shit. How about, uh, we'll do one more story before we leave. Maybe a uh, horrible heckle. Have, you, have you ever had one that was just like, this is going to stick with me for a couple days? And I am actually, I think, technically banned from performing in the city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Because <laughs> I know you go right after your hecklers. So. Oh, yeah. I was in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and it was Comedy Zones. And Comedy Zone would range a whole bunch of one-nighter tours. So you'd be Tuesday in one rural town, Wednesday in another one, Thursday in another one, Friday and Saturday you got to play like a big town in the south, like Greensboro. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and then 
on Sunday, the Sunday gig was always the worst gig of the week. They were just renowned for being awful. And there was a uh, club in Fayetteville, North Carolina, that comics affectionately called Vietnam. <laughs> um, Everyone's it, just bombing. <laughs> it's military base and rednecks. Oh, shit. And that's all that there is in there. So if you don't have, like, I bang my sister every day, you don't it, get good laughs. So, and the two audiences don't talk to each other. And what the rednecks will laugh at, the military people won't. What the military people will laugh at, rednecks will Just a horrible room to play. And, like, poorly designed. The stage was six feet off the, the ground, you know, so you're looking down at your audience. Yeah. It, it's no, no dim lighting. It's, like, fully lit, like crime scene lit. No one realized this was a bad idea that owned this club? No. Or were they just getting paid enough that they go, eh? They were making enough money. Yeah. So on Sunday night, 450 people came in for the comedy. And I'm doing that in air quotes because they didn't come in for the comedy. It was comedy from 8 to 9.30. And then at 9.30, women drink free till 11. So the place was packed with women. And guys. Chasing the women. So... I go there. You should do that in this podcast room. Just, girls drink free. Uh. Girls drink free up, up until 9 p.m. <laughs> so I, uh, I go on stage, and it's mostly Southern comics that are down there. But I, of course, am insane and will go anywhere. So they introduced me as being from New York. And this redneck who's sitting right up front starts screaming at the top of his lungs, Well, if you're from New York, then you must be a Jew! You must be a Jew. And you look real Jewish. He is screaming this. And I'm like, sir, relax. I'm not Jewish. I'm fine. Give me a piece of bacon. I'll prove it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I offered to show my dick to prove it. He didn't quite understand what I meant. You know, so I like perplex him. For whatever reason, he had already ruined the first two hecklers, the first two comics. I perplexed him. He didn't know what to say. To me anymore because I just fucking addressed him. Yeah. And he stops, and for five minutes, he's just. You ever just look at somebody you know they're just waiting to figure out the next heckle? Yeah. It's like you're just you're just trying to figure out what it's to just, yell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm watching the two chromosomes collide. <laughs> and uh, in the middle of a joke, he goes, "Well, if you're from New York and you're not a Jew, then you must be a faggot." Um. Pronounced with a double D. Yeah. Faggot. <laughs> yeah. It, so he must have yelled that word 50 times. Like every time I try and start a joke, he would just yell the word. And I finally had enough. And I jumped from the stage on feet top high. of his table, did the dead drop, jumped next to him. He popped up because he thought there was a fight going on. And I grabbed his head and I kissed him full on the mouth. <laughs> I just, boom. Because my way of being, I, I, I'm a very particular kind of dick. I like taking the thing that you're most afraid of and making you confront it. That would hurt more than the punch in the face. Yeah. It's to get kissed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because here's the thing. You know it's 30 years later. You know his buddies that were there are still giving him shit about it. Remember that New York comic Jew fag <laughs> that kissed, kissed you? you? Did he use tongue? I mean, you know that it, it was like I was setting him up for generational. Yeah. His and, kids are getting cold. Oh. <laughs> You're the yeah. kid of the guy that got kissed. Uh, <laughs> so it stunned him so much that I was able to get back on stage. <laughs> like he didn't know what to do. So then he figures out and he freaks out and he throws over the table and now he's trying to climb onto the stage, which is a six foot thing. He's trying to push himself up. There's a staircase that I just walked up two seconds <laughs> earlier. I'm literally taking the mic stand and smashing his fingers. What is the crowd doing during this? Uh, all the rednecks are hooping and hollering and all the military people are rushing to stop him. There's so, no laughter? It wasn't like, a, oh, this is oh, great. They, it was they were like, laughing when I kissed them. Yeah. But, but at that point when they realized it was a riot. And not more than five minutes later, a full-scale riot broke yeah. out. We and, got a faggot in the group. <laughs> and the owner, and the owner grabbed me and escorted me out and hands me my money as he's driving. And he goes, let's stop at your hotel room. 
and I suggest you get your car and go home now. And I'm there like, I took a bus in. He's there like, I'm going to drive you to another town. Shit. You can wait for the bus there. I mean, he, you're lucky he got paid. Yeah. yeah. That was at least nice of him. Yeah. He probably wanted a kiss. <laughs> well, you so know, is this something you do every day at I, stage? I'm dead sexy. Oh, but God. yeah, you know that that guy has still got to be getting shit. Yeah. My, my hope is that it traumatized him so much he killed himself. I'm That's hoping hope. that you woke him up internally. <laughs> and now he's just kissing guys all... <laughs> And then when he sees me, he'll tell me, I was wrong. I was wrong to torment you for your choices. Remember that uh, view that you got on Living in Exile yeah. at 3 in the morning? Yeah, there you that go. That was him. Uh... That was him. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. That, that's, that's my favorite heckler story that, I, that happened to me. That is a great one. Yeah. I like that one. I think we should end it here. I think so. I don't think you're going to beat the story of uh, you kissing... Some nice redneck that had still had tobacco in his mouth. <laughs> Probably did. <laughs> Spitting tobacco. He brought, but I, at that moment, I made an assessment. What would hurt him more, if I hit him or if I did this? Yeah. And it was just, nope. This is going to fuck him up way more than me punching him. Oh, yeah. Him ever that did. hit, he would have forgot the next drunk time he had. Yeah. That kiss. He's crying <laughs> about it inside. Every time he jerks off, he's, he still wondering. has a little visual. <laughs> My face is the last thing he remembers before he ejaculates. <laughs> he just remembers you jumping down from that stage with your legs wide open. Oh, God. <laughs> Landed in front of him. Yeah. Should have just whipped it out right there. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Probably would have been a good night. Well, this is Mike Langan. Uh, you can follow me at Mike Langan Comedy on Instagram. Uh, Nerds at a Squared Circle, our other podcast on uh, Instagram. New Media Comedy on Instagram. New Media Comedy TV on YouTube. Facebook New Media Comedy. See how my voice is going higher? I get that. What about you, Jim? What's your, uh, uh, what are your plugs? Uh, I'm Jim, just follow me. Follow Jim. Follow Jim. Follow Jim. Follow Jim. Um, Andrino's in exile on Instagram. That's the best way. With the underscores in yeah. between the words? Yep. Uh, daily content, funny stuff, yeah. photos. Yeah. Andrino's in exile. Best way to get me. Girls. You photographing girls always. Always. I'm trying to get involved in that. I let my hair down. <laughs> Wear a bikini. I, I'm not I'm not taking I'm not uh, taking your picture. <laughs> I'm just gonna steal your camera. Yep. All right guys, uh check us out next week. We're gonna try to do this weekly. Yep. I'm gonna throw in some music, make it sound badass. Yeah, there you go. That picture came out pretty good. Yeah, can we get some Ozzy Osbourne? All right. Do whatever you want. Ozzy. All right, see you guys later. All right, bye bye.